Ready, have record. Yay. I hit the record. Thank you. Hey everyone, it's April 9th. Um, we made it through the solar eclipse for those in the States. We didn't, and other places, of course, um, but we're still here. Yay. It did not signal the end of the world, so that was a good thing. Um, let's get to it. You're here at the weekly community call for chaos. As a quick reminder, this is under the chaos code of conduct. So please just keep that in mind if you would be so kind to do that. I'm going to pull this up so y'all don't see all my tabs and stuff, but I'm not sharing the right one, am I? No, no? Well, financial accounting. I think that's a yeah, good one to share a... for, I need that, you know, just get the. See what happens when I try to talk and do, <laughs> do things at once. Yeah. I can't, I can't do yeah, it. Give me your, give me your arbitrage class. <laughs> Oh, that financial accounting. Oh my gosh, it's so hard. I'm so bad at it. But yeah, I did get an A on my first assignment only because we got extra credit if we turned it in early. So I'm like, yes, please. So my extra credit bumped me into an A. So I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna do well in that class. Anyway, let's go. So just a reminder, next week, no chaos meeting. So do not come here next week. No one will be here. Or maybe one other person that didn't get the memo, but please don't come here. Um, there will be no meetings. And if you are running a meeting, I guess that is going to be affected by it. If you're a working group chair, please help spread the word. I think DEI would be the only one this week because it's a weekly meeting, maybe the auger meeting. Sean, you may want to make sure. Yeah. People yeah. On that. Um, I'll do that. Yeah. Any questions about that? Why we do that? Anything? We tend to do that regularly when we have a big OSSNA chaos con week. And also it's nice to just have a break from time to time. Uh, second one is if you are gonna be there and you would like to sign up, here's our booth. We are right next to GitHub over here. Um, so if you would like to sign up for a booth, you, here's where you can do it. Um, anybody's welcome to do it. We'll have somebody there that knows what they're doing if you've never done it before. <laughs> so I will fill in the holes. So um, if you're worried about saying the wrong thing or what to say, not a problem we will help you don't worry about that but if you are going to be at ossna and you want to uh, just represent um chaos and tell spread the good word about, uh, about what we do here that would be great appreciate it and i have sparkly stickers that i'm not sure what to do with so i'm thinking like if you do here they are if you do sign up maybe you get one of these i don't know they're very pretty i like sparkly stickers yeah right who doesn't like sparkly stickers they're the best all right, any questions on that at all from anybody? No, uh, well, we have some empty spots. What should we, what we just <laughs> linger and... We do. And I, again, I plan to fill in whatever's in. Okay. I, I, I don't mind at all. Like, I uh, same. Yeah. Um, the only time is when we have that panel discussion. Mm -hmm. Then is... I have another panel with Dawn. Okay. So make sure you lock that off for yourselves. But yeah, yeah otherwise... It... Okay. It doesn't bother me at all. I like it. It's fine. Okay. I'm kind of like in the times where it's not booth duty. I'm. I don't know what to do with myself actually. So I have to find something to do. That's weird. We'll listen to a talk. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> sure. I guess. <laughs> I tease. I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, no. Nothing else about against that or about that. Let's move on to the bus factor metric. I'm guessing Dawn put this on here. I see you unmuted, so I will let you take it away. Yes, so we've had a lively discussion in the GitHub issue about renaming the bus factor to something a little less uh, morbid and triggering for people. So uh, we've had a lot of discussions in this thread. So I would say that if you would like to vote in the poll and you haven't read the thread, please read through the thread. Um, I know it's long, sorry, because there were a lot of opinions, um, but have a read through the thread, see why, why we want to change it, what some of the thoughts were around some of the other names that were proposed, and then uh, vote in the poll. Uh, keep in mind, the poll is not a popularity contest. So, um, so it's it's really a way for us to gauge what the community is thinking. Um, if all of a sudden we get a whole bunch of these and somebody's gaming it, then we'll just ignore it and uh, do the naming some other way. So, but I would I would love for you to have have your say in in your opinion in in this, and feel free to drop other opinions into the uh, issue as well. Any questions? 
it did create quite a discussion. That's for sure. Yeah. Renaming things always does. Renaming is hard. Yeah. I know I keep saying so, this, but it really, really, really is. Yeah. It was interesting. So thanks for doing that. And everybody who participated. How long are you going to keep it open, Don? Uh, it will close on May 4th. Okay. Um, I needed to do that because um, with the biweekly cadence of a lot of meetings, mm -hmm. the ones that are meeting this week and met last week um, don't meet again until yeah. Yeah, um, May. Yeah, until May. Okay. So I'm keeping it open for, for basically a month. Um, okay. And we'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you for the conversation, Don. Uh, I thought that was, was really interesting. I just wanted to, it was something I mentioned in the uh, the comment, uh, in addition to the naming, uh, I, I suggest we go back and review the metric itself and, and maybe edit it based on the uh, the future name change. Because I, I think we can be a little more explicit in what it is and uh, kind of improve our description. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that was one of the early metrics that was developed. So I think that one is definitely, definitely worth another look once we... Yeah, once we figure out what the new name is, we're going to have to do it anyway. So we might as well just have another look at it and make sure that it's good. I'm really glad that GitHub has this um, function now. I didn't know. I don't think I knew that they had that. So that's no, really I did not cool. either. And I think it was somebody mentioned it in the issue. It might have been Paula Paul um, who mentioned it that that there was this GitHub discussions um, poll. So I, I gave it a go. I've never used it before. How did you how did you do it, if I might ask really quickly? Is it like yeah, uh, you, you go to, I think you go to discussions and then there's an option for polls and you click on that. And once you click on the polls option and the uh, kind of the sidebar and you click on new discussion, it creates a new poll. Yeah, so see the polls, it's like halfway down on the left hand side bar. Over here, but it, it did it as an issue though, right? Did it? Was that an issue? Uh, no, it's a discussion. It, it was is under a discussion. discussion. Okay, okay. Yeah. that's what was yeah. confusing. Awesome, very cool. I always forget discussions is a thing too. That's yeah, awesome. me too. Nobody really uses them. Was somebody saying something? Uh, I was just saying they've been developing this feature a bit over the last year or so. So discussions are more than they used to be now. All right. Anybody have questions or comments for Don? Uh, I actually have one more question about this. So is the discussion over here, is that closed? Or no, okay. So people do have more comments, they can still drop it in this thread. Yeah, absolutely. And what I'm asking people explicitly to do is to drop any further discussion into this issue because we don't wanna fragment the discussion, have half the discussion in the issue and then have it evolve in two different places. So I wanna keep all the discussion in the issue. They can continue to discuss it there. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Don. Okay, let's go on to to this. I'm guessing Ruth put that in here. Yes, I did. Okay, so um, could for Golf Tech be someone there when she got reached out to me on LinkedIn? Um, it's run similar to how um Intel and Outreach is run. So they were um asking if Chaos would be interested in participating. Um, the previous years, um, their audience has been more of Indians, um, but this year they're opening up globally, but they still have like I think 60 to 70 percent of like Indian applications. Um, but yeah, so they were asking if chaos would be part of would love to want to be part of this. Um, the timelines are short because like the applications for mentoring organizations are going on going to start this month so and then the the contribution would run through through may for three months till july i think yes so yeah so um i think it, it's it, it would be good i don't know i think we post on mentoring um 
participation. So I don't know, opening it up, are there projects that we might likely want to um, list out um, one project that I think might be the education. Um, and then I think Adenka has also mentioned like um, documentation related for Virgin. Um, so yeah, they do pay a stipend. Um, it's uh, it's uh, in US it's around one thousand two hundred, and the both organizations share the costs. Like Code for GovTech would take half of it, and then the mentoring organization would take half. So yes, there is a stipend. How much was it, Ruth? Um, equivalent in rupees is equivalent to in dollars. It's paid in rupees, but it's equivalent to one thousand two hundred. Okay. And so we, they would pay six and we would pay six. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Thanks. And then do you have a sense of how the selection of the like mentor? Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's the other thing. So um, the, she said that the, the selection happens, the you know, organization would tell them what's, interns that will be selected um and then i also expressed the the issues we've had in the past right with like other like you know mentoring that we have participated in and just said that if we want to customize them to give us the mentees like they could also do that as well um so it's quite open okay thanks Because that's a good option because our ability to select <laughs> mentees sometimes is it's just really overwhelming. That's what we found in the past. Mm -hmm. There can just be way too many. Particularly, at least with outreachy, you know, the stipends are pretty substantial. And there were just so many people that were interested in one position that we could support. It was just very difficult for us to make a selection. So how are we going to decide if we want to move forward? So I think we what, one thing is, one is what project do we have to move forward to, right? Um, and then I, I couldn't like make a conversation where we talk to them about um or I can get back to her and would know the next steps. But I think the most is identifying the project and the mentor as well. And I think Sean had expressed that like one one of the reasons that we that we do we have like a mentor available depending on the project that we think um we need a mentee to work on. So you know. How many are you thinking, Ruth? Uh, I think starting with one because like one okay, is good, a good. bit new, so we want to see how it works out or what it's like. To me, this seems like a a nice and re-entry into mentorship because we had really taken a break, <laughs> so we had <laughs> it was so much, uh, and six hundred dollars. You know, we'd have to figure out where that money comes from, but it seems like an amount that we could have a conversation around wherever the funding would come from. Uh, you know, because like outreach, I think it's like $7,000. That's just such a different amount of money. 600 mm -hmm. seems pretty approachable. Um, and yeah, I think it sounds great, personally. Okay, so I can take the action item of talking to this potential to project the people that need there to see if they have availability to mentor mm -hmm. and also chat with the the code for GovTech as well. Okay. Do the mentors get paid? Yeah, you that's know? what I did not ask. Okay. <laughs> That as well. Okay. In Outreachy, they don't. And in Google Summer of Code, they can. Okay. 
Yeah, with us that question as well. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Ruth. Sure. I'm going to go ahead and move forward. I think is Gary here. I don't know if Gary's here or not. I tagged him because he brought that topic up last week. So if Gary's not here, I'll, I'll just note if I know that uh, Callie from Red Hat and Gary and a couple other people possibly express some interest in uh, working on a blog post for the XZ issue that arose last week and we do have that data now so we can start to look at it um so maybe uh i'll just asynchronously inquire with uh gary i think that was initially posted under the um data science working group mm -hmm. and maybe under random okay sounds good so if somebody is interested in kind of being a part of that they should just reach out to you gary whoever yeah, uh, I would say uh, follow up with the thread that's already in the data science working group. I'll make a note of it there as well. Is the premise like how could this have been observed prior to it happening? Precisely. Okay. Like what, from a metrics perspective, are there signals that we could pay attention to? Okay. And Sean, just for those who haven't heard what that's about, do you want to just give like a two sentence summary of what happened with that project? Two sentences. A malicious actor used social hacking to become a maintainer of a project that's deployed on many, many Linux systems. They then did bad things that undermined the security of those systems and got caught because it caused a half second delay in an SSH terminal. Thank you. That was sure. perfect. <laughs> You're really on the spot with a quick summary. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, any any other comments or anything on this discussion on this? We have eight minutes left. We did so well. Okay, well then I guess we're going to do some context working group updates. That was me. <laughs> I just put that there. I just wanted to see how people thought the different context working groups were, were going. So we have a couple. Uh, so maybe OSPO. And we have university, we have science. I just want to, you know, this is something that we had proposed to introduce, I don't know, I don't, a year ago. I have no idea when we even did it. But the idea was to help bring people uh, closer to the chaos metrics and software and metrics models without necessarily having to have them involved in the day-to-day -day activities of chaos, like this meeting, for example, or the metrics meeting or a metric model meeting. So I'm just curious how people feel like it's going. And maybe I could start with Don in the corporate OSPO space. Yeah, I think I think the OSPO working group is um, has gone particularly well, I think, because we have sort of a longstanding group of, of people who've been involved in the chaos project and are using our tools and we get really interesting discussions. So it's not, it's not just, you know, those of us that are kind of in the day-to-day -day chaos stuff, you know, creating, posing all the agenda items, things like that. Usually OSPO working group, about half the agenda items usually come from people in that in that working group to talk about stuff that's going on in their OSPOs, uh, which has been has been great from my perspective. Cool. Uh, I agree with the OSPO. Sean, how are things going, at least from your perspective on science? I think we're, we've got a steady group of people, a uh, core group who participate. And uh, we just restarted that one. It was either at the end of last year or the beginning of this year. And, um, you know, there's a core group that continues to show up and discuss it. I think, like last time, I think we've had some pretty deep discussions on uh, things like what would be required, for example, for a mentoring program. So there's a, there's a different, definitely a, an adjacent sort of knowledge of the scientific software enterprise from an investigator's perspective that's distinct from the university group. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, are you, do you feel like, like what Don was saying, like people are bringing their issues to the table? No, I don't, I don't think we're there yet, but this group has been around. I mean, I suppose we've been talking about for several years now, um, pretty consistently. So, you know, we'll see. Okay. I think, though, that we might need to encourage people to bring agenda items because the um, because those audiences are so different, um, it's different people attending than the people attending the corporate OSPO one. When we create the agendas as the chairs all the time, we set the expectation that we create the agendas all the time, even when we say that we don't. Um, so, so one of the things that can really help from just a community standpoint is to you know to ask people to add things to the agenda you know hey so and so you're doing something interesting with this thing can you add it to the agenda and talk about it next week yeah i like that, and that sort of approaching people individually it. yeah and it, it involves a little more proactive work from us up front but i think it would really help kickstart the fact that other people add things to the agendas and it's not just mm -hmm. always the chairs yeah all i've been doing is putting the your agenda item here text so Perhaps, perhaps moving to uh, individual inquiry is better. We don't meet again until May, so there's time to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I have the same sense in university as well. Like people are definitely there. They're showing up. There's no doubt about it. Um, yeah, and the I last one I convinced Mike Nolan to bring an agenda item. Um, okay. Next Perfect. one to talk about how they've used metrics within RIT. Okay, that'd be good because I feel like sometimes that audience is there to like listen, like we have the answers. <laughs> I don't know that, you know, you know, we don't really always have the answers. <laughs> we have like guidance and support. Yeah, so, and I think in particular, encouraging some of the people, uh, you know, in the university space where a lot of those hospitals are brand new, encouraging are. people like, like Mike and Stephanie and Claire who've been in the space for a while to talk mm -hmm. about. You know something relevant to what they're doing i think can can help so do you think like in these context groups are they are they should we be trying to make things in them you know like you know like in the metrics model working group, we make metrics models or in the dei working group, we might be focusing on say badging like we leave with action items to make things and you know we come back and we you get the idea. Yeah. Some of these groups, like the the OSPO one, we do have the book chapter um, as a thing. You know, I know that's the to do. So, what do you think about, or is it just a place to talk, really, about metrics? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I think okay. it just depends a lot on the group. Like we've tried to produce some things out of the OSPO one, and we haven't gotten a lot of traction with that. Yeah because they're, they're all just very busy people. Yep. And I suspect we'd run into some of the same issues with the university I one. Do, I think so too. They're busy. Trying like, to spin up their OSPO. Yeah. I don't know that they have time to take a bunch of actions. Yes, agreed. Um, okay. I feel like the scientific one is maybe halfway in between. I'm not, I'm not sure. No, I have the same sense. Um, yeah, I'm not sure either. Okay. Um, yeah, Georg, I didn't know you were on Georg. Georg, do you have updates from App Ecosystem too? I I snuck in late. <laughs> <laughs> the App Ecosystem Working Group, we have four members that are consistently there. Mary Blessing is um, helpful and participating and our liaison or I, I forgot what we call the people who move between working groups and then ambassadors you, ambassadors yes no liaisons no they're liaisons ambassadors they are liaisons. Are completely okay. different okay and we have uh, shri and neo so gnome and kde each have one representative and then chaos has two and we are slowly working on things and we're meeting about half the time <laughs> that we, we should be meeting every now and then we, we cancel because there are only four of us and when two of us are missing we don't meet so it's a very slow but steady the next 
thing that we are doing is um, we want to have a podcast with experts in the field on fundraising and using metrics for fundraising efforts so that we can create recommendations for metrics to use when communities want to find funds and go approach funders. Okay, that'd be interesting. The podcast. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'd like to listen to that. <laughs> I want more money. Okay, thanks. Thanks, everybody. This is helpful. I agree that ASPO working group, the person you talked about, Don, certainly the oldest of them all, and people who have been doing this for the longest amount of time. And I, you know, have some sense of stability within their organization, unlike sometimes the university ASPOs that are really just trying to get up and run. And they're on a shorter runway, too, I think, as well, sometimes just from a funding perspective. Very helpful. Thank you. Um, I hate to cut this a little short if we had other stuff, but it is quarter or half past. So um, we do need to speak about chaos con planning since it is next week. Um, thanks. So we're going to go ahead and end this meeting here. Thank you, everybody, for showing up and being here with us and discussing and listening to my dog snore with me. I appreciate you. Huh. Have a good Didn't rest even of hear the day. snoring. Yeah, she just started really loudly. Yeah, so good timing. Um, yeah, have a great day, everybody. We'll see you here, not next week, two weeks, two weeks from here. See you later. Bye. Sean, you can stop the recording. Can I? That's the question.